Okay, so limits of trig functions, there's not any big secret to it. Basically, if you want to find the limit of the trig function, you generally just evaluate it at the number as long as the number is in the domain. So the limit of sine x as x approaches c is just sine c. The limit of tangent x as x approaches c is just tangent c. Now again, remember, tangent x is sine over cosine, so when they say as long as it's in the domain of the trig function, well, you know that any number that makes cosine 0 wouldn't be in the domain of tangent, so you know you can't let x approach that number. Limit of secant x as x approaches c would be secant c. Limit of cosine x as x approaches c would be cosine c. Limit of cotangent x as x approaches c is cotangent c, and finally the limit of cosecant x as x approaches c is just cosecant c. So this is pretty straightforward. If you want the limit of sine x as x approaches pi, that's just going to be sine of pi, which is 0. If you want the limit of x tangent x as x approaches pi over 4, well, that's going to be the same as the limit of x as x approaches pi over 4, which is pi over 4, times the limit of tangent as x approaches pi over 4, which would be tangent of pi over 4. And then tangent of pi over 4 is just 1, so that's just going to be pi over 4 times 1, which is pi over 4. And then um, the limit of secant squared x as x approaches pi over 3 would be the limit of, would be secant of pi over 3 quantity squared. Well, secant pi over 3 is 2, so secant squared pi over 3 would be 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, now let's talk about some indeterminate forms so we can get back to some of those problems where the denominator is undefined. An indeterminate form is an undefined form that does not lead to a real number. You cannot evaluate a function if you get an indeterminate form, but you may be able to evaluate the limit. So, some of those limits we did in the beginning of this chapter, we were getting 0 over 0, like this one here. If you tried to plug this, if you try to plug x equal 2 in, if you plug x equal 2 into this, you're going to get 0 over 0. So that's actually called an indeterminate form. Another indeterminate form is infinity over infinity. So, like, if you tried to evaluate this rational function as x approaches infinity, well, the top's going to go to infinity and the bottom's going to go to infinity. So, as x goes to infinity, so you're going to have infinity over infinity. Now, this one is actually going to be 1 to infinity. Um, if you take the limit of this function as x approaches infinity, well, as x approaches infinity, 1 over infinity basically goes to 0, so this inside just becomes 1 to the infinity power. So those are indeterminate forms. There are some other indeterminate forms, but those are the ones we're going to worry about right now. We're going to start with the indeterminate form 0 over 0. And the trick, the trick here in, in evaluating limits with this form is to find a replacement function for the function. So here's the replacement theorem that's going to allow us to do that. Let c be a real number and let f of x equal g of x for all values except c in some open interval containing c. If the limit of g of x as x approaches c exists, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists, and the two limits must be the same. So basically what we're saying is if you can find a replacement function to replace f of x with, say, the function g of x, and then if you can evaluate this limit, then the limit, this limit is actually going to be the answer to the original limit. Okay, so here's an example. These two functions, uh, f of x equals... Uh, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, and let's change this to g of x, and g of x equals x plus 2. These two functions agree everywhere except x equal 2. Now you can check them, you can graph them, their graphs are going to look identical, the graphs are going to look like a straight line, the only difference is the first function is going to have a hole, 
somewhere where x is 2. So there's going to be a hole there, whereas the second function is not going to have the hole. But see, but, but the two functions agree everywhere else except at that hole. So, and that's where x equals um, 2. Okay? So, so that's basically the difference of the two functions. Now, the way I get this, of course, you can, you can see that if you want to get that function, the way I got x plus 2 was simply, remember, x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And so that first function can be written as x minus 2 over x plus 2. And then in the denominator, you have x minus 2. And as long as x does not equal 2, we can cancel these and just get x plus 2. And now notice what I said. I said as long as x is not equal to. Well, when you're evaluating a limit, remember the if x doesn't equal to, it just approaches 2. So x never actually equals 2. So, so these two functions are actually the same function. So I can actually take this limit, the limit of this function, and replace it with the limit of this function to get my answer. So the answer here to this function is... It, this limit is easy to evaluate since it's a polynomial just plug 2 in for x and I get 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now there's two techniques that you can use. One is a cancellation technique and the other is a rationalization technique. Those are the two techniques that you're going to use with algebraic functions. With some other trigonometric functions you may have to try some other things. But with these algebraic functions like this one here I have the limit of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. Now it's important to see what x approaches. If x approaches a number that makes the numerator 0 and the denominator 0, then you're going to get an indeterminate form. So now let's find, let's see if we can find a replacement. Well, x cubed plus 1 is the sum of cubes. And if you dig into your factoring bag, there's a formula for factoring sum of cubes. So make sure you look that formula up. So x cubed plus 1 factors into um, x minus 1. Actually, that's supposed to be a minus right there. Okay. So that actually factors into x minus 1, x squared plus x plus 1, all over x minus 1. Well, now the x minus 1 right here will cancel, and I'll just get x squared plus x plus 1. So I get that function. Okay, now I can take the limit of my original function and replace it with the limit of my new function, and it's going to give me the answer to the limit of the original function. So now I evaluate this limit as x approaches 1, and I get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. And you might remember that earlier when we looked at the graph and looked at the table, we saw that this function was getting closer and closer to 3 as x got closer and closer to 1. Okay, here's another one. Uh, if you plug 3 into this, you're going to get 9 minus 9 on top, which is 0, and then you're going to get 9 minus 15 plus 6 on bottom, which is 0. So you have, again, indeterminate form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to factor the top into x minus 3, x plus 3. I'm going to factor the bottom into x minus 3, x minus 2. And then I can cancel x minus 3 over x minus 3 and get a replacement function, x plus 3 over x minus 2. And so now the limit of my original function has to equal the same as the limit of my replacement function. So now I just evaluate this function as x approaches 3, and I get 3 plus 3 over 3 minus 2, so I get 6 over 1, which is 6. Okay, a couple more. This one, uh, if you let x go to 0, the top's going to be 0, the bottom's going to be 0. So what I'm going to do is just factor an x out of the top, x out of the bottom. And notice that x over x is 1 as long as x is not equal to 0. And again, x doesn't equal 0 in the limit. It just gets close to it. So now I can replace the function that I started with with this new function, x minus 4 over x plus 5, and I can just evaluate the limit of this function as x approaches 0. And so to evaluate that, since that's a rational function, just evaluate the numerator at 0 and you get minus 4. Evaluate the denominator at 0 and you get 5, so you get negative 4 fifths. And sometimes this even works with uh, 
with trig functions. Here, cosine squared x minus 1 over cosine x minus 1. Well, cosine squared x minus 1 is different to squares, and it factors into cosine x minus 1, cosine x plus 1. Well, cosine x minus 1 can cancel with cosine x minus 1 and give you 1, so cosine x plus 1 is the replacement function that we're going to use. And now just evaluate this function at 0 to get the answer. So I get cosine of 0 plus 1, and cosine of 0 is 1, so that's just 1 plus 1 which is 2. And again, I probably should have mentioned this. If you evaluate this function at 0, you're going to get 0 over 0. Again, uh, you're going to get that indeterminate forms. Now, these replacements will still work even if you don't get the indeterminate forms. But you don't really have to do the replacement theorem unless you get the indeterminate form. Now, the rationalization technique, let me show you how that works. You have the limit of square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1. Well, if you plug 1 in, you're going to get 0 on top and 0 on bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to rationalize the numerator. Now remember, the numerator is square root of x minus 1. So in order to rationalize it, I use square root of x plus 1. So I need to multiply the top by square root of x plus 1. So I also have to multiply the bottom by the same thing. So then... When I multiply square root of x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1, I just get difference of squares. So the first term is square root of x squared, which is x. The second term is minus 1 squared, which is minus 1. And now on the bottom, make sure you don't multiply these together. Excuse me. Because if you try to foil these, you'll lose what, what you want to cancel. See, you want, you want one of these factors to cancel. And actually, this factor, x minus 1 over x minus 1, is just 1. So you get 1 over square root of x plus 1. And there's my replacement theorem. So now if I, I can take this, func this limit here and replace it with the, this limit here, and then I can evaluate this limit as x approaches 1, and I get 1 over square root of 1 plus 1, which is just 1 half. Um, here's a couple more. Uh, this one, um, if you plug 0 in, you get square root of 2 minus square root of 2 over 0, which is 0 over 0, so it's an indeterminate form. So I'm going to rationalize it, the numerator, by multiplying by the square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2 on the top and bottom. And then when I multiply these two together, square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2 is x plus 2. And then minus square root of 2 squared would give me minus 2. So basically you square this term and then minus this term squared. So you get x plus 2 minus 2. And then 2 minus 2 is 0, so you just get x. You get x here, and you have x on bottom. And x over x is 1. So you just get 1 over square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2. And that's going to be, if you let x go to 0 now, here's your replacement function. And now let x go to 0, and you get 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 2, which is 1 over 2 square root of 2. And that's the exact answer, and that's probably the answer your teacher's going to want, not some decimal. Uh, freeze the video and look at this one. This is the same thing, except instead of using x, I'm using delta x. But it's basically the same concept. You're going to rationalize the numerator, and then you're going to multiply the denominator by the same thing. And then basically the same thing is going to happen over here. The threes are going to cancel. And then you're going to have delta x over delta x, which is 1. And then if you let delta x go to 0, you're going to get 1 over square root of 3 plus square root of 3, which is 1 over 2 square root of 3. Okay, now I'll pick up on the squeeze theorem on the next problem, I mean on the next video. But here's a couple of practice problems that you can do here, and the answers are given. So go ahead and freeze the video and try these two practice problems. This one you're going to factor and uh, look for a uh, replacement function, and this one you're going to have to rationalize and look for a replacement function. Both of these, if you just plug the number in, you're going to get that indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So you can't evaluate it by just plugging the number in. You're going to have to find a replacement function.